Hello, hello everyone. It's me, Ariel. <gasps> what a surprise. Were you thinking it was going to be someone else? <laughs> Ooh, I'm already in a very silly mood. Okay, let's do the boring technical stuff first. Can you all hear me okay? I have some jazz music on in the background. Ooh. Down boy, down, down boy, down. <laughs> So, can you hear me okay? Is the music okay? It's not too loud, is it? I'm just going to, um... This is not a product placement. So I am going to use some unbranded product to lubricate my lips. Mm. Okay. Ricardo says the sound is okay. So... Yeah, Jace says it's okay. Ooh, I think I recognize that name, Jace, if it's the same Jace as before. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh my God. Okay. Carmen says everything is perfect. Oh, I feel the same way. Lovely. Gorgeous. Oh, okay. Ooh, lots more comments coming in. Um, Thank you, David. David says the music is great. I'm very happy. I love a bit of jazz. Actually, though, I can't hear the jazz because if I play the jazz, then it will create feedback. So I have to trust the jazz music is good because I can't hear it. <laughs> okay, so hello. Okay, we have Rita, David, Ricardo, Carmen, um, Bolodimir, Bolodimir. Mm, lovely name. Heidi, oh, okay. So I asked at the beginning in the chat and I'm gonna ask again. Where are you in the world? Everyone, leave a comment and tell me where you are. We have Rita from Italy. We have David from Poland. Um, we have Heidi from Germany. I love the name Heidi. It makes me think of one... Um, pip, uh, there, there's some character in a show called Heidi, right? Like maybe Picky... Pippi Longstockings, there's a Heidi, or maybe it's The Sound of Music, I don't know, but I think of that. And then I think of Heidi Klum from um, Project Runway. <laughs> okay, we've got Liz from Mexico. Awesome, I really want to visit Mexico. I should also say where I'm from, I guess. I'm in the UK, I'm in London. If you didn't know, I moved to London in December. So very excited, very happy to be here. I'm really, I've set up a kind of, well, some of this stuff is not mine. Some of this stuff is my housemates, but I've tried to make a nice little artistic space for the streaming and the teaching. And as you can see, we've got an old favorite here. Who remembers his name? Leave a comment, okay. Um, we've got, okay, Bolodimir. I hope I'm saying your name right, Bolodimir. Uh, I don't speak Ukrainian or Russian, and it is written in Cyrillic, so uh, let me know if it's terrible. You're from Ukraine, Kyiv, lovely. Carmen, also from Germany. Jace, in Peru, but moving to Italy soon. Ah, so it is the same Jace, because there was another Jace who I knew very well from before who came to the live streams who was also in Peru. So unless there's some very statistical uh, anomaly, something very unusual, you're the same Jace, wonderful. I'm glad to hear you're moving, that's exciting. Thank you, Liz, for saying I have a nice room. Um, unfortunately, you might hear the background noise. There is a main road right next to me outside the window, so it's not perfect, but um, we can't all be me. <laughs> How is everyone doing? How are you? How is your English learning going? Let me know that. Let me know how is your learning going? What difficulties are you facing? I want to start today's stream by talking about your challenges, your difficulties learning English. And then, wow. 
I kind of don't have a really um, detailed plan for this stream, but I would like to perform a story with all of your help. I would like you to help me create a story, but more about that later. Hi, Piero, another person I know, and I know you're in Italy. Um, actually, Piero, I teach, so it's really nice to see you at the stream as well. Ricardo is from Colombia, but living in Brazil. Mmm, gorgeous. Both places I would love to visit. Okay. Um, yeah, so let me know. How are your studies going, everyone? How is your English learning going? Reina likes the shirt. Thank you. I am very happy. This shirt, I always get compliments when I wear this shirt. I bought it in a vintage clothes shop in Bristol and I was very pleasantly surprised because Bristol, if you don't know, Bristol is a, a British city and it's very trendy. It's very cool. Everyone loves going to Bristol and vintage clothes in Bristol usually are expensive. So when I saw this, I thought like, oh God, it's gonna be like 50 pounds. And it was, I think, 15 pounds, like one five. I was very happy. So I snatched it up. So yes, I'm very happy for my colorful shirt. I should probably um, iron it, right? Like ironing is when you use the hot tool to make it flat. As you can see, it kind of needs to be ironed here. But I hate ironing. Oh, ironing is boring. But now oh, I really should iron it though, shouldn't I? Oh, see, this is how I know I'm turning into a boring adult because I want to start ironing my clothes. Ugh. Actually, it's my birthday soon. On the 5th of May, I will be turning 31. So that's something. I mean, I guess it's not as like scary as turning 30, but, um, it's certainly, I don't know, if it feels like a big birthday. I guess because I'm going to have a nice party. I'm going to rent, well, not rent. I'm going to a karaoke bar with my friends and I love karaoke. Oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. Okay. So let me write this question down, actually. That would, that would be helpful, I think. Um, so what challenges are you currently facing learning English? Um, can you see that? No, it's too big. Let me make it a bit smaller. Oh, I could actually just, yeah. Oh, perfect. Perfect size. Okay. So everyone answer this question. If you would be so kind, if you would do me the favor of answering this question. We've already got some replies. Ricardo says, I'm adding a few daily challenges to up my level. Ricardo, I'm very intrigued what these challenges are. I know a lot of people love like the, the challenges, right? Like the 30 day challenge. Um, oh, that makes me think of like aerobics. Uh, but yeah, like 30 day language challenge. I actually was thinking the other day, maybe I should do like a reading challenge. And maybe we do like a month long challenge where every day you read a book, you in English, and then I guess I would read a book in Spanish, for example. And then we'll do like check-ins and we can email and like talk about how the challenge is going. Are you interested in the idea of doing like a, a reading challenge together? I think it would be really fun and it would motivate me to read more. I mean, I do read a lot, but I would love to read more in Spanish because my Spanish is quite rusty. I haven't practiced Spanish in quite a long time. So it would be great to have a reason to read. And I love talking about books, of course. Okay, David says, I started to learn English in October, 2023. I found you on Spotify and I really enjoy studying with you. I also read your ebook. My level is about A2, sometimes B1 when I have a good day. Cool, thank you, David. And your challenge, as you have said, is a lack of a language buddy or a language partner, I guess. So I guess a lot of people, when they learn a language, they find a language partner to talk with, right? 
And usually the idea is you, you exchange, like we'll talk for 30 minutes in Spanish and then 30 minutes in English. Sometimes it's called a tandem. Um, and to be honest, I find them not very good. <laughs> I find them, I find it really difficult because really you want to find someone who you have a good connection with. But also the problem usually is, is if one of the languages is, if one of you is better in one of the languages, like let's say one of you is really, really good at Spanish and the other is like, ah, oh, okay, at English, then it's really hard to switch languages because our brains are lazy and they just want to speak the language that's easier, you know? Okay. Um, Piero says, yes, please. I'm guessing that's about the, um, the, the reading challenge, so good to know. Christ, Rita says Christ. Uh, oh, maybe you're talking about my shirts. My shirt is a bit um, creased. Yeah, I need to iron it, iron out the creases. Creases are when it's like um, folded like this. Yeah, okay, Carmen is also interested in the challenge. Good, let me write that down. Um, oh my God. My desk is such a mess. When I prepared for this stream, I was like, everything in this box has to look good. And then everything outside of the camera is like, bleh, like I have so many post-it notes on my desk. Like literally, I, I'm such a stereotype of a creative person. I'm like, oh, I've got post-it notes everywhere. I've got three on my computer. <laughs> I've got two separate blocks of post-it notes. <laughs> Ooh. Um, I will use this post-it note to write down. <laughs> okay, 30 day reading challenge. I know some people who have done there's this like reading challenge. There's this reading challenge that they do in Esperanto and they call it a sumo. It's like, a, oh, we're doing a sumo, like a sumo wrestler. And I don't know why they call it that. I think it's a weird name. So I'm not gonna call mine a sumo. Mine will just be a challenge, but maybe it will have a fun name. Yeah, it would be nice to have a fun name, like maybe like, um, a reading sprint or a, um, a re um, I don't know. If any of you can think of a fun name for a 30 day reading challenge, let me know. Okay, Jace says my level is officially B2, but really I think I'm A2 and that they took a test and they have a certificate. So unfortunately, I think that's quite a common experience I think a lot of people do a class where it's like, this is a B1 class, and then you do the B2 class, and then you do the B2 exam, and you technically have a B2 level. But the thing with that is, you know, exams, ugh, languages are really hard to measure by exams. Like language skills, I think is one of the hardest things to measure. It's very internal, right? So you can be really good at language exams, but maybe, you know, you haven't actually acquired the language that you are supposed to, right? And um, that's obviously not great because it makes you feel like, a lack of confidence and of course a lot of these classes if there's an exam at the end of the class then you're working towards the exam so even at the beginning of the class you're thinking or the teacher is thinking about the questions in the exam and preparing you for that so actually I think it's better to do a non-exam class you will learn more that way because you're not thinking in the exam, right? And the questions. But um, don't worry, Jace, it's, it's a very common problem and you'll be strong in some areas and weak in some areas. Probably you'll be stronger in like grammar. So the best thing to do is just to read and listen and speak and you know, all the things you normally do, right? But 
if you feel like the class lacked real use of the language, then that's something to work on, right? By yourself. Okay. And uh, thank you for complimenting my shirt. Mm, everyone loves my shirt. I really, I really need to iron it though. This is, this is annoying me. This is annoying me. This, this boy, this little doggy right here. I should say it's, it's not really a dog. <laughs> That's just me being weird. This is uh, a collar. Yeah, the collar is, um, one side of the collar is sticking up and I don't like it. Okay. Ricardo says, I am watching short episodes of TV series, adding new vocabulary, and now I'm using an AI chatbot. Ooh, this is an interesting topic. So I think watching TV is a brilliant way to um, work on your English. And, you know, it can be good just to sit back and enjoy it. But if you want to write down new vocabulary, you can. I try to find a balance, right? If I feel like it's getting frustrating, I'm like, I can't enjoy the show because I'm always looking up words, then I stop, right? Um, now, AI chatbots. I would be careful using AI to learn languages because you're not getting like a real cultural connection. Um, it's very artificial in terms of culture, but also if it makes a mistake and we know that AI does make mistakes, you won't really know, right? Um, it's very hard to tell sometimes. Also, I have a personal beef with AI. Do you all know what a personal beef is? Beef as in like the food. But when you say, um, I have a beef with something, I have beef with you, that means you have a disagreement. You have an, an issue with something, tension, conflict. And I have a personal beef with AI because people have started stealing my transcripts from easystoriesinenglish.com, making an AI voice read them and then putting them on YouTube. So people are using AI to steal my work and pretend it's their work. So I, I, I'm not happy with AI right now. And of course I know that, you know, the AI, it's not the AI's fault. The AI is just like an animal. It doesn't know what it's doing. It's the human's fault who use the AI, but I'm still not happy with those nasty little robots. Blech. Okay. <laughs> Boris asks if I'm going to learn Russian. Um, whew. the thing is, I, I think it might be a while before I learn a new language. I speak eight languages now, and two of those languages, Mandarin, Chinese, and Slovak, are really at quite a low level. So generally, I like to improve my current languages before learning a new one. But this year, I've barely studied any language other than, you know, my work, right? Like I haven't been studying other languages. Because after I moved, I've been doing so much stuff. I've been performing, storytelling. I've been singing in a choir. I've been working. Um, I've been really busy. And obviously learning a language takes time. And really, I don't like to dedicate myself to a new language unless I know I can focus on it for a good length of time. And that's because if you get to beginner level and then you stop learning, it's very easy to forget. But if you get to like B1 or B2 level in a language and then you stop studying, it stays for longer. So I would only want to learn Russian if I knew I could dedicate enough time to get to like B2 level and I would maybe study really intensely. I will say because I've studied Slovak, now, when I hear something in Russian, I can sometimes understand a bit of it, which is really exciting because I'm like, oh my God, because Slavic languages are so difficult and it's really exciting to understand anything in Russian. <laughs> um, okay. David says, how can I increase my active vocabulary? 
I understand a lot, but when I have started speaking, I sound like a broken robot. Oh, in my mind, I speak fluently. That is a fantastic way of putting it. Um, the, the fluently part, not the robot part. Um, it's very common to feel like one level in your mind and then one when you speak. And it's completely normal that your receptive language, that's your listening and your reading, will be higher than your spoken language, your speaking and your writing. And actually, it's the same for your native language. You can um, understand books on quite difficult topics that you probably couldn't talk about. Like I could maybe read a book on quantum physics for beginners and I could understand it. But I couldn't talk about quantum physics because I don't know the language. I don't know the concepts, right? So our understanding is always going to be better than our production. So um, partly it's expectations. But also when it comes to active vocabulary, I think we often underestimate how well we have to know the words before we can use them. So there are some studies that show that if we see a new word, we actually have to see or hear that word 50 to 70 times before we can actively use it. So it sounds strange, but actually reading and listening more will improve your active vocabulary because you're strengthening your, your associations with those words and phrases. You know, think of the, the neurons in the brain. Let's say every word or structure is a neuron, a neural pathway, and every time you hear or read that, every time you hear or read that word, that neural pathway gets stronger. So read and listen more. And then thirdly, there is this kind of translation between the language in your head and the mouth, right? And if you haven't spoken a lot, that will be slower. And that can be blocked by anxiety, by not really knowing what to talk about. You know, sometimes if I go and talk to someone on the street who maybe, maybe I'm tired, maybe I don't know the person, maybe we're very different people, it's harder to hold a conversation than when I talk to my friend, right? So that's completely normal as well. It's very contextual. So um, yeah, so I would say find people who you enjoy speaking with, where it feels comfortable, okay? Um, Piero likes my earrings. I got these earrings very cheap because as you can see, this one is broken, but actually uh, it looks, still looks nice. I think it still looks nice. So I got it cheap, but um, it's fun to do this. I love earrings where I can just live my wet dog fantasy. You know when a dog goes and swims and it gets really wet and then it comes out of the water and <laughs> shakes all over? That's me right now with these earrings. Living my wet dog fantasy. Okay. <laughs> Carmen asks, um, do you think some people are more talented to learn a new language than others? Yes, um, this is potentially a controversial opinion but I think there is a genetic component. And I only say that because this sounds like I'm bragging, but I think I'm predisposed towards learning languages well, okay? And I think particularly I have a good, a really good ear and a good brain for pronunciation. So I can hear a phrase in a new language that I don't know very well and I can pronounce it pretty close or exactly like the original and most people can't do that so i think partly unfortunately yes some people are better at learning languages just as some people are better at music some people are better at um building things right but of course if you put in the work you can get there 
And I think it's a bit different from like physical abilities. Like some people are always going to be really strong compared to other people. But with language, everyone can do it. Learning a language is a fundamental human ability that we all share. And actually, if you look around the world, being monolingual, only speaking one language, is not normal. More than half of the world speaks at least two languages. More than half of the world is multilingual. So um, just statistically, it must be possible, right? Hi, Amanda from Brazil. Good to see you. Hi, Stiv from Russia. Hello, Lean from Quebec. Um, who now lives in England. Okay, Lean, I'd love to know which part of the UK you live in, if you're comfortable sharing. Obviously, I, I know we don't all want to share our location <laughs> online. <laughs> oh, thank you. Raina says, I like that I'm doing a stream, that I'm doing the stream. Yeah, I think this is my first live stream in like two years. I'll be honest, I did it a lot during COVID, right? Because obviously COVID, it was a different world. We were all inside. We didn't have anything to do. So doing a live stream every week in COVID was like great. Um, but now it's a bit different, of course. But I, I, I'm, I'm really happy I'm doing it again. I'm kind of changing up my uh, approach to the podcast a bit. Um, I'm definitely taking it more seriously. I don't know. Bef again, back during COVID, I was um, doing a lot. I was working really, really hard. I was doing live streams and newsletter and everything. And I overworked. I became a workaholic. And then I burned out, which you probably know about. Um, and now I think I've really come close to recovering from that burnout and I'm approaching the work a lot differently now. I'm still putting in hard work and enthusiasm like I did before. But now, um, I don't know, I'm going to do a separate episode about this, actually. In a few weeks, I'm going to do a conversational episode where I talk all about burnout and how I have recovered from burnout. But basically, um, you didn't ask this question. <laughs> I just started talking about it. Anyway, uh, Lynn lives in the Yorkshire Dales. Oh, okay. If people don't know, Yorkshire is in the north of England. And Yorkshire is one of the most beautiful parts of the country. It is gorgeous. The Yorkshire Dales is oh, mwah, gorgeous near Grassington. I have never been to Yorkshire, but I know it's very pretty. And they have a lovely accent there. Um, I probably can't do a Yorkshire accent, but generally up there, um, they like to say, hey up, hey up, means um, like, hello, or how are you? And that's something they say up in the north. Um, okay, so I want to talk about a story. I want to tell a little story that happened to me today. And it's a very funny story because um, it's about me being stupid. So, of course, it's a great story. So, near where I live, there are woods. And um, it's quite like a wide area of woodland, especially for London. It's quite a lot of woods. But it's shaped strangely. There's like a bit, it kind of goes around and then it's got um houses and stuff in the middle and sometimes it's got these like narrow bits and then sometimes it's wider so although i've been walking in the woods since i moved here in december i still don't know all of the area really really well but recently a few weeks ago i um i did a long walk in the woods and i kind of got to know the lay of the land. So the lay of the land is kind of understanding the layouts of a place, knowing where everything is, knowing your way around, having a sense of the place. So I, I figured out how to do a loop 
because if any of you are keen walkers, you will know that going there and then going back the same way you came, it's just not very satisfying. It feels much better to do a loop so you don't walk back the way you came. My aunt always liked to say, um, when we were walking as kids and we wanted to turn back because we didn't want to do the whole loop, she would always say, oh, no, 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 no. You can't turn back or they'll get you. And we never knew who they were, but that was why we couldn't go back. We had to do a loop. So the other day I figured out a lovely loop, a walking loop I can do from my house going through all of the, these woods and parks and it takes about an hour and a half and I've walked in some some of these parts many times so I was very confident I was going to do my loop today an hour and a half great beautiful weather today 19 degrees celsius which um it's a bit high for this time of year, but let's not talk about that. Uh, very sunny. All of the flowers were out. The trees have this these lovely pink and white blossoms. The air smelt good. I mean, everything was just gorgeous. And also because it's warmer now, all of the mud on the forest paths was a bit drier because when I was walking a few weeks ago, it was like, squelchy right your feet squelched on the paths um so i didn't bring my phone i just brought my keys because i don't want to bring my phone when i go out for a walk i just want to connect with nature relax and really be present and i knew that i really wanted to be present for this live stream so i needed to clear my head and the first part of the walk is the part I do all the time, went fine. And then when I got to a certain area, I should have just followed the path I always follow. But I thought, oh, you know what? I don't wanna go down that path because it's, it's always got lots of people on it. I wanna go in the more, you know, wild part of the woods, right? And this part, I should have gone down this path and then you get to a road and you cross the road and there's more woods on the other side of the road. But I decided to wander a bit. Big mistake. I thought I could navigate very well. You know, I, I do use Google Maps a lot when I go places, but I try to um, deliberately not use it all the time. So I have some of my own sense of direction still. I am just ruining my voice. Sorry, I'm talking. I talk too loudly at the start of the stream and now I'm like. <clears throat> <Okay>. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I do have um, cough sweets here, but the thing is, I don't want to suck on one because then I'll, I'll I'll be talking like that. Hello, Gabriella. Oh, it's so lovely to see Gabriella. It's really fun seeing all of the names of the people who used to come to the streams before. Oh, it's like a family reunion. Okay, so I walked into the woods. I was wandering around and I got lost. And it was like, okay, fine. I'll just walk until I reach a road or a map because these woods are divided into smaller sections that have little maps outside. And I was like, once I find the road, I'll know where I am. Um, I didn't, I found the road and I was like, ooh, this isn't the road I know. And I was like, maybe the area I know is further up the road. I looked, no, don't recognize it. Went to the bus stop, no, don't know any of the area found the little sign that tells you where the woods are. And so, you know how I said the wood is like narrow, wide, divided up? Well, I was at this little part at the top. I wanted to go down here. I should have gone along here and I somehow went like up here, 
So I really went the completely the wrong direction. And so I was like, it's okay. I'll just use the map and go the opposite direction. Okay, cool. So I cross the road and I find oh the green, the, the, the walk, right? There's like a, a chain, a specific walk that I can follow. Oh, but it's closed. This part was closed temporarily. So they had a diversion. So they said, go that way to get back onto the walk. So I was walking through this, you know, not forest, uh, suburban area, houses, and I couldn't find the walk. I couldn't find the woods. I was trying to, I knew kind of roughly where the woods were, and I was trying to find a way in. And then I found a place that said um, footpath. Great, that should get me to the woods. And it was very strange. Like there was a road with houses on the right, and then on the left, there was a big field and there was a fence. And then there was this really narrow footpath between the road and the field. And the footpath went on for like five or 10 minutes and it was about this wide. So I was walking along this footpath and it was cut, it was turning a bunch. And I didn't, I was looking at the sun and trying to figure out like, okay, the sun was over there when I was going that way. So as long as the sun is on my right, I'm good. But if the you know, oh, but then I was walking towards the sun and I thought I should be walking away from the sun. And this is when I realized that I'm really not very good at navigation. Uh, <laughs> I mean, even if I had a bloody compass, I probably still would have got lost. And then I arrived at this place, this, again, an area with houses. And I was like, I don't see any main roads. I don't see any landmarks. I don't see any bus stops. I cannot figure out where the hell I am. And so I went and asked someone. I saw a man sitting outside his house. So I went and asked him. Um, and he, he was from Nepal. And he said, oh, I don't speak very good English. So I tried, we tried to talk. He showed me Google Maps on his phone. Um, because I saw a sign that said, oh, this is the walk, the, the, the name of the path. Sorry, I don't want to say the name of the walk because then you might know where I live. So there's a specific walk that goes through all of these woods. But the path to go on the walk had a gate and the gate was locked. So I was like, OK, so I can't go on the walk because the gate is locked. And then he showed me his phone. And, you know, this was like midday. And I wanted to get home with lots of time to get ready for the stream, to download the software, to prepare the room. <laughs> and I was like, I need to get back. His phone said it was like one hour walk to get back to my house. So <clears throat> it's a good thing the, p the path was locked though, because that was actually the wrong way. I needed to go the other way. So I walked a really long way and then I went into a shop because I still didn't know where I was <laughs> and I went into a shop and I asked like I'm really sorry I'm lost can you tell me how to get home and luckily they could and it was very easy I just walked down a long road for like 30 minutes and then I then I got to the woods that I was looking for originally all that time before so essentially I kind of went along here went up must have wandered around all of these places for like an hour just to get back here so I could go and finish the loop. So all in all, I, I meant to go for like a one and a half hour walk and I went for more like a three hour walk. So that was tiring, but at least the weather was nice. Ooh. Have you ever had a similar experience have you ever got lost like that? Please let me know so I feel less embarrassed and stupid. <laughs> Is the music all right, by the way? I'm just gonna quickly listen to the music. I have no idea if the music goes with the story I'm telling. Like maybe the story is really like, whoa, and then the music is like, mm, jazz. I don't know, because I can't hear it, but anyway. Ooh. 
so yeah let me know what you thought of that little story that escapade that misadventure a misadventure is like an adventure that goes wrong a bad adventure have any of you got lost in a similar way and generally do you like going for walks without bringing your phone do you like to just kind of enjoy nature because i will say there was a gorgeous moment during the walk before i got lost where i was just listening to all the birds and it was so beautiful and i just sat on a log and just listened to the birds and it was gorgeous okay i don't know if anyone's going to comment on that there's there's a delay right so while i'm waiting for you to comment i want to talk about these now some of you have probably already heard of these some of you may have already bought them and listened to them now, these are my books um i realized recently that i did a really bad job of advertising and promoting my own work when i said a bit earlier that i've changed my approach to the podcast this is kind of what i mean um i've been very shy in the past like i haven't wanted to over promote my own work some of you might know about imposter syndrome which is like when you think you're not good enough to be in the position you are so even though i wrote and published and released these books i don't talk about them very much and i i need to promote them more um obviously i'm not gonna like shove it in your face all the time but uh, I would like to talk about them because I don't think I've really shown them on the stream apart from when I released them. But anyway, let's just answer some comments. Piero says, that was a hard time, that's for sure. To be honest, as far as getting lost goes, it could have been a lot worse, especially because I didn't have my wallet. Because um, at one point I was like, oh God, if I find a bus stop, and that I know the bus, maybe I should just get the bus, but I couldn't because I didn't have money. Um, but we used to go on walks in the south of France. So with my family growing up, we used to go on holiday in the south of France. And my dad would usually be the one to lead the walks. Oh, and these walks would be like five hour walks. My family is like big walkers, yeah? And my, my parents like to wear um, waterproof trousers, like trousers over your trousers that don't get wet in the rain. But my dad does not have a very good sense of direction. I wonder where I get it from. So he would always be so confident, like I know where we're going. And then guess what? We got lost. And the five hour walk turned into a seven hour walk. In the south of France, in the summer, so like 30 degrees in the middle of nowhere in the Dordogne um, and one time we ended up going down this hill and we realized that the land belonged to a farmer and there were signs saying like private property do not trespass as in you should not be going here this is private property and um we were a bit worried we might get shot by a french farmer so <laughs> could have been worse okay um oh we have a listener here with a chinese name which i don't know how to pronounce um so i'm not going to try and say it uh actually you know what let me look it up really quickly because i'm curious <clears throat> oh okay so I don't, again, I also, I also don't know if it's like Mandarin or um, Cantonese, but from my very quick research, I think the name is pronounced Tsang Hui. So Tsang Hui says, uh, I love going for a walk after dinner. Yeah, that's a nice time to go for a walk when the weather is warm, you know, have a nice evening walk, especially in the summer in the UK. We have these lovely long days because we're so far north in the summer it can be light until like 10 p.m and it's gorgeous okay um hello smile from vietnam by the way uh carmen says i enjoy going for a walk and leaving my phone at home 
Um, so I'm able to enjoy nature without any distraction. Exactly. I feel very much the same. And also with the getting lost thing, I'm not going to lie. I kind of enjoy getting lost. Like these days when we always have maps on our phone, it's really nice to experience getting lost sometimes. And, you know, being confident that like, no, no, I can find my way. I can do this. I'm an adult. I, you know, like we used to be hunter gatherers. We used to do this all the time. <laughs> okay. Uh, David says he got lost in the mountains in Poland. It was very hazy and I chose the wrong path. That was a tough time. So when you say hazy, do you mean like misty? Like you couldn't see, oh sorry, foggy. When it's foggy, you can't see very far because hazy, we usually use to talk about our mind. Like, oh, I feel a bit hazy. So I'm just curious, David, was it foggy? Or were you feeling hazy? Because usually it's when people take drugs that they're feeling hazy. But I have a similar experience actually. When I went walking with my mum, my sister and my sister's friend in Wales, we were walking in a mountain in Wales and it got really, really foggy like that. It got foggy really quickly. And we could literally see about a meter in front of us. And we were walking on this really narrow path, very high up. And so if we fell, well, we didn't know how long we would fall for. We didn't know how far we would fall because we couldn't see that far. So we decided to turn back because we didn't want to die. <laughs> okay. Carmen says, if I were you, I would have gone crazy when I got lost and didn't have my phone with me. I was a bit stressed, but I was mainly only stressed because I knew I had to be back for the live stream. Um, but you know, I have this attitude when funny things happen to me where I'm like, this will make a great story. I'll get a great story out of this. Um, and that, that, that keeps me going. <laughs> Jace says, I love walking, but I've never done it without my phone. It's not that I'm afraid of getting lost. Um, I just, yeah, well, Jace, give it a try. Obviously, it doesn't have to be a long walk. And I would say, especially if you know where you're going, if it's a walk you've done before, don't take your phone. You know, there is a study actually where they got people to complete some tasks and one of the groups had their phone on the table. One of the groups had the phone in their pocket and one of the groups had their phone in a bag outside. And they found even if your phone was um, face down in the table or in your pocket, you did worse in the task in this experiment. And the people whose phone was outside, they did a much better. So even if our phone is turned off and we can't see it, if it's like near us, we don't concentrate as well because, you know, Phones are addictive, right? So I think even if you're not using your phone a lot when you're walking, it probably is meaning you connect less with nature. And it's so easy to just say like, oh, just take a picture. And then, oh, and then you're checking your messages. And next thing you know, the beautiful majesty of nature is, has disappeared. And you're just like, like a zombie. Okay. I'm a bit, uh, a bit of a Luddite, I suppose. <laughs> oh, thank you. Andre says happy birthday. Well, not happy birthday yet in just under a month. So be careful. Oh, I got Tsang Hui. I got your name correct. Yay. Uh, oh, I didn't, sorry. I, there's a, um, there's a singer on YouTube. There's like a, a vocal coach, someone who teaches singing. She's called Cheryl Porter and she does the most fun warm ups. I always use her warm ups and she always like dances and she gets you to dance when you warm up. Um, and whenever she hits like the last notes in a warm up, she does this. So she will be like, um, uh, me, 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 me. wait, what's an example? Um, and 
it's very fun. So, sorry. Rambling, rambling. I'm talking about anything. I'm just rambling. Rambling is when you just talk about random things with no path. And rambling actually is also when you go for a long walk. So um, I've done a lot of rambling today in both senses. Okay. Um, Neen says, we also often get lost on walks. <laughs> and there are many choices for wild walks up there in Yorkshire, which is gorgeous. But we never panic and we always find the right way with an app now. Oh. So there's a there's a walk I want to do where you walk along the Thames, the river. Um, and I was actually thinking of just printing out the instructions on pieces of paper and, and using that, which is very old fashioned because I don't want to bring my phone. I don't want to bring my phone. I'm, a, I'm an old man. OK. Aline also says it's often foggy here and we can't see anything. And sometimes there's a snowstorm. Ooh, yeah, we don't get that down in London. Um, yeah, so David, we can mean we can use haze to mean like a uh, fog, but I usually think of a like a mental haze, which you might get from, you know. <laughs> Piero says it's probably good to have your phone switched off with you just for security. Yeah, you know, I agree, kind of. But I think these days we worry so much about safety. It's like, oh, my God, what if I get what if I get lost or what if this happens? And like in the past, if you were out and you didn't have your phone and someone needed to call you, well, they couldn't call you and it was OK and everyone survived. Right. And Piero, I know you're older than me, so you definitely remember a time when that was true. <laughs> um, I think also. I was actually thinking when I was walking today, well, if I get mugged, oh, does anyone does everyone know what that word means? Mugged mug mugging is when someone steals from you, but specifically mugging is like Maybe they have a knife or a gun and they say, give me all your money. Give me your wallet. That's mugging. So I was walking and I was thinking, "Ooh, if someone mugs me, great. I don't have my phone. I don't have my wallet. They can take my keys, but like, whatever. Why would they want my keys? They don't know where I live. So um, if you I would say it's actually safer to not bring your phone or your wallets because then if you get mugged, then it's fine. Um, <laughs> Carlos says, help, I don't speak English. OK, Carlos, well, you've come to the right place. Carlos, can you be more specific? What is your problem? Do you feel scared to speak English? Do you think that you don't know the right words? What is the problem when you speak? Hello, Juzi. It's so nice to see Juzi again. Another another old school podcast listener. Another um, person who came to the streams in the past. How nice. Mm. Jace asks a really interesting question. What is the longest I've ever gone without touching my phone? Well, when I was in university, I was actually quite addicted to my phone. There was a period when I was using my phone a lot to the extent that I actually got a dumb phone. So a dumb phone or a feature phone or a basic phone. They're old phones. They're smaller than smartphones and they can only like text and call and maybe use WhatsApp or something. And I used a feature phone for years so that I could focus more. But the problem was, you know, you can still use social media on your computer. So, yeah, it wasn't perfect. Um, but what's the longest I've like never used my phone? I've definitely gone at least a day or two without touching my phone. But I would like to try doing. Oh, no, no, no. Actually, no. Last year, I went to a festival 
I went to a festival called Queer Spirit and it was a maybe four or five days and I basically didn't use my phone the whole time. So I've done at least five days without my phone. I would love to do longer though. Actually, what I really want to try is I want to try doing a silent retreat. So a silent retreat is when you go to a place for, let's say, a week. And for the whole week, you don't talk. You say nothing. So usually it's a meditation thing, right? Like um, Buddhist meditation often. So you meditate, you're with other people, but you don't talk. That's a silent retreat. And I would love to try a silent retreat. I think especially because I love to talk. Talking is part of my job. It would be very useful for me to go to a silent retreat. Hmm? Uh, I probably would hate it in some ways, but I think I would also love it, you know? So yeah. Whew. Okay, so I wanna talk about my books. Um, actually, I know some of you, oh, Hassan says I like your mustache. Thank you. I grew it myself. I know some of you have already bought my books and read them. And if you have done so, please leave a comment. I would love to hear it. Um, but I just want to mention these for people who don't know about them. So there are four versions of this book. So you can see there's the beginner version, oh no, other way around. Beginner version, pre-intermediate, intermediate, advanced, or levels one, two, three, four. And this book is a collection of 10 short stories. So you can see here the list of stories and uh, most of these stories, all but one of them have been on the podcast. But the versions in this book are better. They are updated. They have, I changed them to make them a bit more interesting. And they have um, images in them to describe the vocabulary. They also have vocabulary descriptions at the end for some of the words. So um, the reason I did this book is because obviously I'm sure many of you have found Easy Stories in English helpful for improving your English, but I know that reading is something that people struggle with a lot. It's very difficult to read in a foreign language. So these books are kind of like a bridge between listening to the podcast and reading books independently, okay? And the reason I did four versions is if you're not so confident with reading, you probably want to start by reading something that's easier, right? Something that's quite easy for you. So maybe even if you are like level two or level three, you maybe, you maybe want to start with the beginner level and then you can read all the stories. Then you know the stories, you know the characters, and then you can go to level two and you can reread the same stories, but now they're more challenging. Maybe you want to jump from level one to level four. That could be good as well. Really, it's just a way, hopefully, to make reading more easy and accessible for you. Uh, Piero says he bought level four. Thank you so much. David has the beginner and the pre-intermediate version. Um, I think the beginner one is the most popular one. Um, the, what I would recommend is if you go let me put the link up, actually, where you can buy it. That would be useful, huh? Uh, <laughs> easy stories in English.com slash book. Ta-da! So if you go to this link, which I will also put in the chat. If you open this link, it will tell you all the places you can buy the books. I'll just check that that works. Yes, that's fine. Um, and yeah, you can go on Amazon or wherever you buy your books and you can look at the preview. And a really useful tip to know if a book is the right level for you 
is you open it on a page, can be any page, probably the first page, but just open one page and go through and count the number of words that are completely new for you. Count the number of words that you don't know, okay? If the number is more than 10, the book is probably too difficult for you, okay? And you want to choose something easier. If there are no new words, you know all the words, the book might be too easy for you. It's still fun to read and it's probably, no, it's definitely still useful for your language learning because you're strengthening those neurons in the brain, but you might want to try something harder. So I really recommend that method. Okay, hello to Ginny from France who has the level two version of the book. Fantastic. I will also say, I love this picture on the front. Who can tell me, I'm sure many of you know, who can tell me who these characters are? Hmm, I wonder. So yeah, I really love the design. Um, I'm really happy with how it came out. There's a picture of me on the back. <laughs> this picture is a bit old. It's a bit out of date, huh? Uh, I've changed a bit since that picture was taken. <laughs> But um, in a way, it's quite nice to have that history. I might update the book at some point and put a more current picture on there. But yeah. Um, so yeah, that's me talking about the book. I'll stop the marketing now and take a sip of water. Mm. So thank you again to everyone who's bought the book and read the book. If you leave a review on any of the websites, that would be really helpful. Only 14 people have pressed the like button, says Hassan. Well, everyone better get to work. Smash that like button. Hit the like button. Press the like button like this. And then, oh my God, the stream will be so popular. Everyone will come and view it. As you can tell, I kind of hate saying all that stuff, like hit the like button, subscribe. But to be honest, it does help. So I'll say it again, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Click the little bell as well. So you get notifications when I upload new videos. Because to be <laughs> Jay says he's destroying the like button. Kill the like button. Murder the like button. Tell the like button that you have kidnapped its children and you are holding them hostage in a far away mysterious location. And that if the like button does not press itself, you are going to kill its children. Oh, maybe I shouldn't say this. Maybe, maybe, maybe YouTube will close the stream. Okay. <laughs> Uh, that was a joke. That was a joke. Parody, parody, parody. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, do subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be posting more videos. I've uh, been putting old episodes of the podcast on the YouTube channel, which I should have done like a year ago, but I'm not very organized. Oops. And I might put other videos up, who knows? I'm kind of experimenting with new things with the podcast. Okay, so I'm going to take a little break in a sec. Um, oh, are you leaving, Lean? Okay, if you're leaving, it was lovely to see you. Julesy has two versions of the book. Um, awesome. Oh, so your sons love the beginner version, but it's too easy now. Good, so they've their, their level's improved. That's fantastic. Awesome. Okay, so I need to go to the toilet. Oh, okay. Well, my housemate just went to the toilet, if I heard correctly, so I'm not going to go to the toilet. But in a second, I'm going to take a break because I've been talking nonstop for an hour. And then after the break, we will um, create a story together. Oh, very exciting. But... Oh, Piero also has to go. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got your thing this evening. Well, it was lovely to see you, Piero. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to go on a break. But before we go on a break, I want to ask you a question. And I had the question in my mind 
and I forgot what the question was. <laughs> oh my god, what was I gonna say? Um, oh! I, um, uh, is it a good question? It's kind of a boring question. Okay, while I think of a... While I, while I think of a question, I'll just put my legs in the air. Yeah, do a little dance. Oh, you know what I figured out how to do recently? You might know voguing. Voguing is a style of dance and it's a lot with the hands, like But there's this one move in voguing where you like spin your hands around and I couldn't really do it before. But now I figured out how to do this. Isn't this fun? So yeah, I'm not amazing at it, but it's really fun to be able to do this continuously. Oh, and there's jazz music in the background. That won't fit with that. <laughs> okay. Yes, Alejandro will be in the story. Rest assured. Okay, so let's take a little break. And while we're on a break, I want you to tell me, uh, oh, I'll just update this text. We'll be back soon. Um, but I have a question. What would you like to see from me and the podcast? Oh, God, this is not going to fit, is it? Oh, okay. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Oh, God. I'm not very good at this whole technology thing. Oh, I sound so old when I say that. I'm really good at this technology thing. Don't listen to me. I'm amazing at what I do. How does that work? Awesome. Okay, that works. Oh, okay. Fab fabulous. Fabulous and fantastic. So while we're on this little five-minute break, I would like you to answer this question in the chat. What would you like to see from me and the podcast? Would you like more live streams? Would you like more episodes, uh, more conversation, more story? Uh, maybe you want me to do more like YouTube videos where I talk about stuff. Just let me know, it would be really helpful. And actually that's like a boring question. It's really just for me. So another question, what is your, favorite fruit yeah that's the really important question i need to know what your favorite fruit is actually that's that's vital um if you don't tell me what your favorite fruit is i i i, I won't be able to keep making the podcast i don't know what to say i think it's just the most important it's the most important thing there is okay <laughs> i'm gonna go pee
And we're back! Okay, how is everyone doing? I hope you had a nice little break. I hope you got yourself a cup of tea or coffee or whatever. I'm just going to read through the comments. Hassan says, Jemil Ipekchi. I hope I got that right. He's also very good at hand dancing and has a moustache like mine. I will look him up. Let me just write that down. Um, I'm guessing from the name that Jemil is Turkish. And he does have a nice moustache, damn. Yeah, I I feel I feel like I, I look my, my moustache is very like Turkish. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> but like um I think most British people don't have such thick moustaches. I think it's probably actually my Irish genes because my dad is Irish. I also have very like um hooded eyes very very hooded like these parts which is like a very irish thing i have irish eyes and i have like a gingery mustache so very irish um juicy likes the conversational podcasts and the live streams seeing more comments about youtube videos david wants more content in spotify maybe like more conversations ah interviews with other podcasters like alistair or luke well, funny you should say that because I just recorded an interview with Alistair from English Learning for Curious Minds, which was so much fun. And that's going to be on his podcast. And then on Easy Stories in English, we've written a story together, which is it's going to be really fun. So we, we talked about the story idea on the podcast and then he's written it and we're working on it and we're going to record it together so that should be coming out in the next month or so so it's great that you say that david okay more live streams more youtube and live streams cool okay so it sounds like we want more youtube that's good good to know i'm doing the right thing <laughs> um and more importantly some people have told me their favorite fruit and that's what i really like to hear about so we've got watermelon from carmen durian from tsanghui a durian is a very unique kind of fruit very um spiky ow i have seen durian i have never tried durian because as you say tsanghui it's got a very strong smell um i have tried durian cake I tried a cake that had durian flavor and I did not like it. I think it's probably one of those things where if you grow up eating durian, you like it. And if you don't, it's like a very diff a very um, strange flavor. We say for flavors like that, we say um, it's an acquired taste. It's an acquired taste because you have to acquire the taste otherwise you don't like it and i think that's true of a lot of food like certain cheeses are acquired tastes so i would love to try durian actually there's a there's an organic um fruit shop near me that does durian maybe i should try it soon hmm interesting oh also smile from vietnam loves durian oh my god all the durian lovers are here that's that's very unusual very very niche fruit um, Bettina says, I would love to hear your thoughts about information that's shared on the news. Um, how helpful is it to listen to BBC World News for information and ling English learning? It's a difficult question. For oh, the police are coming. <laughs> that's what happens when you talk about the news. Um, it's a difficult question for me to answer because I don't really read the news very much for mental health reasons. I don't like reading the news a lot. So I don't know. I think from what I've heard, BBC World Service is pretty good. So um, yeah, if you enjoy, if you enjoy reading the news in English, if you can understand it okay, then sure, why not? It really, those are the two important things. Is it fun and is it useful? So I would go by that. Okay, date. we've got David, who, another David, 
who likes mango and uh, someone who likes strawberry. What was the name? Ginny, Ginny who loves strawberry. Oh my God. Okay, awesome. Cool. So now we're going to make a story together. Now, um, I know a lot of you have been to the streams in the past because I recognize a lot of these names. So you probably remember in the past where I got ideas from you and then I typed a story. But today we're going to do something a bit different. So you're going to give me the ideas. I'm going to elicit the ideas from you. And then I'm going to get up and perform it physically. Because I realized that storytelling, hunched over, typing, it's just not very exciting, you know? And it's also bad for my back. Um, and I think it's much more fun to do it as a performance. Because obviously you don't see that on the podcast, right? You hear me perform, but you don't see me perform. And I've been doing a lot more storytelling on stage recently. So I thought it would be lovely to do it on the podcast. It's not the podcast. I thought it would be lovely to do it on the live stream as well. So um, I'm just thinking, how about this? Oh, Juzi, see you soon. Lovely to have you here. Um, if you have any burning ideas, like I really want you to tell a story about this, leave a comment now. I know Jace said Alejandro has to be in the story. So that's one thing. Alejandro, I'm writing that down. Anything else you want me to put in the story, leave a comment. Otherwise, I think, um, yeah, let's use these cards, Dixit cards. I love this game. It has really cool cards and we can use these to help us get some ideas. So I'm going to shuffle the deck. And then I'm going to show you some cards and I want you to give me ideas for the story based on the cards. So it can be literally what you see, like maybe you see something on the card that looks really interesting or maybe it inspires an idea in you. Like, ooh, I think that looks like a story about someone who leaves home for the first time. We have a f uh, something from Bettina, speed dating. Oh, I love that idea. Oh my God, speed dating. And I think there's a certain dragon in here who would be a very interesting speed data. I kind of just want to start the story with that, but let's get some more ideas. Okay, so card number one. Oh no, I had this the other day with a student. Let's do something different. Okay, I'm bad at shuffling. Okay, cool, card number one. So we have a mouse sitting on a rug or a carpet, maybe a magic carpet. The mouse has a turban and he's playing a snake. And uh, yeah, there's a, you know, stereotypical Arabic background. Um, so maybe this um, mouse is a snake charmer. Hmm? I think, you know what? I think this could be useful for our speed dating story. Ooh, David says a story about a magic academy. Each student has a superpower. I love that. So let's put uh, magic school as the idea. And actually, this is all kind of tying together for me because when I was at university, I did speed dating and I think maybe there's a magic school and maybe this mouse is a member of the magic school and maybe they do speed dating at the magic school. Bettina says travel. Yeah, I think that definitely tie, ties into the, the, <laughs> the magic school. Arabian Nights speed dating. Okay, I don't want to get into uncomfortable cultural territory. I have a lot of listeners in Iran and... Um, hmm. I, I have a fair few listeners in the Middle East, so I don't want to do anything offensive. 
but certainly we can have a mouse who is a snake charmer. You might remember I did a story um, about a turnip and on the podcast and there was a snake charmer in that story. So a snake charmer is someone who plays a flute and the snake dances. Okay, so we've got a magic school, speed dating. Let's see if we can get some more members of our magic school. Oh, well, this is interesting. We have a, a, a not a stopwatch, um, a pocket watch. But there's like space in part of the pocket watch. I think that's fun. So some kind of like magical artifact. Yeah. Which makes sense because it's a magic school. Hmm. Ooh, I love this. Got ideas already. Fantastic. Okay. Hmm. You know what? I think I'm ready to start the story, but before I do, I'll give you all one last chance. If there's something you're like, I absolutely need this to be in the story, this must be in the story, um, say it now. This is your last chance to throw an idea in. It could be a person, a character, it could be a location, it could be a sound, an animal, <laughs> whatever you want. But now is your last chance and make it fun and silly because we love that. While you do that, I'm going to go grab a certain character who I think would be good for our story. So I'll see you in a second. Ooh. Oh my god, this chair is so fun. I love, I love doing this. Oh my god, I could do this all day. Okay, so I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> we have another member of our Magic Academy right here. Uh, and we, oh, we have a fair, we literally have a fairy. My mum knitted me this fairy. And isn't, isn't she beautiful, honestly? So we've got that. I'll be back in a sec. Hello. <laughs> Here we have Takeshi. Many of you will remember him as well. One of my favorite ones, honk honk. Um, we have Simba, we have Takeshi, and we have Alejandro. Ale Alejandro. Okay, so. Oh. Oh, that's so cute. Oh my God, oh, this is so, I, I need to take a selfie, I think. Wait, I'm gonna just take a quick selfie because the family is all here. This is so adorable, oh my god. Okay. Oh, what's happened to my camera? Why is it so... The camera is very blurry. That's weird. Oh, this is terrible, wait. <laughs> Oh, so adorable. Look at this picture. Oh my God, so cute. Family reunion. Okay. Why did I put my tongue out? Oh, that's so weird. Why did I do that? <laughs> okay, so you've given me some great ideas. You've said smell of exotic food, smell of durian. So I'm gonna put exotic smell. And a song, a karaoke, a song contest. Oh my God, you're all so good at this. Ah, I love it. Okay. So. To summarize, we have Alejandro, magic school, speed dating, some kind of magical object, an exotic smell, probably a durian, and karaoke. Okay. It might be nicer if you position them closer to the camera. Well, I'm going to be standing up and then... Don't worry, Hassan, I've, I've planned this. They will be coming closer. Okay. Ooh. A story about Ariel who, who came to an African country, became its president and gained fame among the population. 
Okay. <laughs> that would be a different story. Are you ready for something fun? Woo! Okay. I'm ready to start. So I need to just move the camera a bit because I'm going to be performing like this and I'm going to take the microphone. Okay. Can you all hear me okay? This is very fun. I feel like I'm now, now, see now, now that I'm standing up, I've got my microphone. The angle is not very nice, but whatever, we'll do. Um, now I feel like I'm performing, you know? Now I feel like I'm on the stage. I'm ready to give it. I'm ready to work. Mm, I'm ready to burp, apparently. <laughs> okay. So, let me turn off the jazz. How about that? <laughs> no more jazz. Okay, so I'm ready to start. So, <clears throat> oh, so I'm really excited. Can you all hear me okay? Is this too loud, too quiet? I hopefully there's no noise from like me holding the microphone. I tested it and it seemed okay. So if it's like really loud, let me know and I'll move the microphone. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. Once upon a time in a far away country full of very mysterious forests where it was very easy to get lost, there was a magic school, a school full of gorgeous castles and towers. It was not just one castle that went like that. It was a mixture, a collection of castles, and they were so close. They had so many different shapes that it all went together into one crazy mess of magical castles. You stood outside this school and your eyes could not understand what you were seeing. The shapes, the forms, the colours were so strange and beautiful. And of course, this school was magic. So the castles didn't just stay where they were, they moved. One minute, a tower was there, you blinked, and then suddenly it was on its side. Honestly. It was very hard to get a good night's sleep in this magic school because, well, one minute you're lying down and one minute you're on the ceiling. But somehow the students who went there learned to cope with it. You could say this school was quite selective. Now, normally when we say a school is selective, we're talking about the teachers choosing the students very carefully. But actually, it was the school itself that was selective. Because as you know, these buildings were magical. If a student decided, I want to go to the magic school, all they had to do was walk through the front doors to find out if they were worthy. And if they weren't, as soon as they touched the door of the school, BAM! They went flying through the air, across the river, over the mountains, and all the way home. Now, as you know, this school was a chaotic mess, and it was very particular about the students it chose. Therefore, the only people who taught at this school, studied at this school, even the people who worked in the kitchens were crazy, unhinged, unsafe. This was not a place full of people you wanted to be around. It was a horrible, dangerous place. So of course, one of the top students of the school was none other than storyteller Ariel Goodbody because who else? But this story is not about him. I'm sure you know his stories already. No, this story is about a particular... Oh, I was gonna get the card, but I'll leave it. This story is about a particular little mouse. A mouse who decided at the young age of three, I'm going to go to the magic school and I'm going to learn to be a snake charmer. And so the mouse 
picked up his flute, put on his turban, and made the long journey to the school. He came to the door, he knocked, he didn't hear anything, but unfortunately he couldn't reach the handle because he was just a little mouse. So instead he crawled under the door and entered the school and it was all fine. Nobody got kicked out on that day. Now, this mouse was a hard-working student. Every day he woke up, practiced his flute for hours, and fortunately there were many snakes who went to the school who, for the most part, weren't particularly friendly students, and they especially didn't like it when the mouse start, started playing his flute and tried to get them to dance. So this mouse did not have a lot of friends. And unfortunately, this was an issue. The mouse thought, well, I don't need friends, I just need magic, right? But as the year went on, people started talking more and more about prom. Of course, even a strange magical school that's very selective about its students must have a dance at the end of the year. And this wasn't just any dance. Normally, when schools have dances, it can be very embarrassing for the students because if they don't get a date for the dance, if no one asks them to the dance, they feel horrible humiliation and shame and they get laughed at by their peers. But in this school, it was even worse because if you didn't get a date for, for prom, the whole school the literal actual building laughed at you and I don't know if you've ever been inside a building while it laughs but it's pretty much the same as standing inside a volcano while it erupts not particularly fun so the mouse knew it had to get a date for the prom and what else could it do it had to try speed dating it was the only method it could think of because this mouse was very anxious and the thought of going up and asking an individual person to go on a date no it just simply wasn't going to happen unfortunately the faculty the staff at the school put together a speed dating event a few weeks before prom for those students unfortunate enough to not have a date yet it was basically, let's put all the weird kids in a room together and they can pair up. So the mouse came for his speed dating. He was to sit down on one side of a table and every few minutes, the person opposite him would change and he would meet someone new. Now the mouse maybe wasn't the friendliest. Maybe all he did was spend his time playing the flute and, you know, reading comic books, but he had a decent heart. He was nice enough. So he was sure, you know what? I'm sure I can get on with someone well enough. I'm sure I can go to the prom. It can't be that hard. And so the mouse settled in for the evening. Unfortunately, his first conversational partner was none other than Ariel Goodbody. Oh, hello. I've heard you're playing. You know, um, it was good. It was good until one of the snakes came and bit my leg. So maybe don't play the music next time I'm in the bath and there are snakes around. Now, in this story, Ariel Goodbody was not very nice, apparently. Shame on you, Ariel Goodbody. Well, I'm just doing my best, Ariel Goodbody. I'm improvising a story and you're improvising me and I'm improvising you improvising me. It's, it's a lot. I'm going to need a therapist after this. So that one didn't go so well. Unfortunately, bong, 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 the gong sounded and they moved on. And the next conversation partner that the mouse had was... A little fairy, a little fairy called mm, 
Does anyone have ideas for names? I've forgotten what I called this. Oh no, I remember the fairy's name. The fairy's name was Oberon. And the mouse said, Ah, oh, Oberon, that's the name of the fairy king in that Shakespeare play, isn't it? But you're just a little fairy. You don't look like a fairy king to me. Oh. And Oberon said, Well, actually, I am a fairy king. And for saying that, BAM! And Oberon cast a powerful spell on the mouse. And the mouse felt this, ooh, this weird tingly sensation. And it felt some kind of wetness in its armpits and under its legs. And then a horrible, horrible smell came out of the mouse. That was right. It wasn't a death spell. It wasn't a spell to get struck by lightning. It wasn't a magic spell to turn him into a frog. It was the worst kind of spell possible. It was the Durian smell curse. Oh, suddenly everyone in the room let out a groan. Oh no, that mouse stank of Durian. And unfortunately in this school, there were not too many Durian fans. <sighs> so the person running the speed dating covered his nose, or I guess pinched his nose, and banged the gong again. Move on! So Oberon moved on, laughing to himself. <laughs> and the next date came up. It was Simba. And uh, the mouse said, now, um, I've read Aesop's fables. I know that generally lions like to eat mice, but allow me to argue why that would be a bad idea. And Simba just said, mm, and tried to eat the mouse. But luckily, the mouse shoved his flute in the way and blocked Simba's mouth with his flute. But oh no. The horrible little lion bit the flute and damaged it. Ugh, oh, horrendous. And then they still had a few minutes left, so they kind of just sat there awkwardly while the lion um, tried to pick bits of flute out of his teeth. I'm really sorry, said Simba. I didn't eat before this. I Look, I know people love to say that lions just have these horrible base instincts and that we go around attacking people, but it's really not true. I know I lunged at you, but I would have stopped before I swallowed. Like I would have spat you out. Like I wouldn't have eaten you. Seriously, I promise. Um. Anyway, do you want to go to prom with me? I mean, you're a bit shorter than me, but bong, 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 and thank God the gong was sounded and the next person was there. And it was an adorable little purple dragon called Ale, not Alejandro. Don't call me that. It was Takeshi. And for the first time that evening, the mouse thought, oh, okay, maybe this is someone I can get along with. Yeah, may maybe this is someone I could spend an evening with without losing my mind. But Takeshi said, oh, you're the one who smells of durian. Uh, actually, I'm, <laughs> I'm allergic to durian. <laughs> And when, when I, when I have an allergic reaction to durian, I get a bit of. I like to breathe fire. And the the bit the 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 dragon sneezed so hard that he breathed fire all over the mouse and practically burned him to a crisp. Luckily, the, mi the mouse's ears were defended by the turban, but uh, he continued the night particularly more naked than he had begun it. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry, said Takeshi. 
It's okay, it's okay, said the mouse. Really, look, I'll, I'll move back and, you know, maybe I'll get that uh, fairy prince to uncurse me. But it's okay, like, it's okay, it happens. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't do this. Ah! And the dragon flew away. So, so sad he was at the offense he had caused. Now, by this point, the mouse was starting to lose hope. How was he ever going to find a date for prom if this was the selection? And worse than that, even if he found someone, how are they going to spend a whole evening together? Especially now that he stank of durian. But the gong sounded again. Bong, bong, bong. Here we went. And next flew in another dragon. I'm back. What do you mean you're back? I've never met you before. What do you mean you've never met me before? I'm only the most famous dragon on Ariel's YouTube channel. Honestly, just children these days. YouTube channel? We're, we're at a speed dating event in a magical college. I, I don't think YouTube even exists in this universe. Well, it should. Because that's where I perform. Ah, blah, 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 blah. I'm a good performer, aren't I? Ooh, ooh. Oh, you want to see some hands dancing? How about this? This is some hands dancing. Blah, 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 blah. And I can shake my tail as well. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, okay, but um, I don't really see how any of this is relevant to going on a date together. I mean, uh, well, I guess you wouldn't be the worst date. Would we dance together? Together? Oh, hell no. I don't like anyone upstaging me. I will dance by myself and you can watch and you can hold my bag while I dance. Well, I, you know, I guess that's fine because I didn't really want to dance. I just wanted to have a date. But, um, do people like you? No, everyone hates me. Are you kidding? Ugh, I barely even go to this school. Well, I mean, I, mm, there may have been some incident where I got, you know, technically expelled, but uh, that, it's all water under the bridge. Look, the important thing to know is if you spend an evening with me, nobody, nobody is going to try and laugh at you. Not even this school around me. Really? Said the mouse. Because um, you seem kind of weird. I know I'm weird. But I'm also violent. And if someone tries to make fun of you, I'll eat them. Mm. Well, that was a logic even a mouse could not argue with. And so... Looking around again at the room, looking at his own scorched fur, he decided it was time to cut his losses. This was probably the best option he was going to get. So he decided to cut his losses and go with Alejandro. All right, said the mouse. We can go on a date together. Um, You've got some, like, cobweb on you, though. Almost like someone kept you in very dirty conditions for a long time and has just pulled you out of a cupboard for a live stream. Well, that would be very unprofessional, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be very unprofessional, said the mouse. And so the dragon flew away and the mouse went to bed, relieved that finally it had found a date. And the, pro the date of the prom came up. And just as Alejandro the dragon had promised, he danced by himself. Oh, yeah. Woo! And the mouse was actually a bit bored, you know? At first, it was nice to just sit, chill, drink a magic potion. And thank God, the first magic potion he drank just happened to be an antidote for the durian curse. So he stopped smelling of durian. Everything was going his way. And then he saw it. 
in the distance something that they always speak of in legends, something that moves the heart and stirs the soul and gets the body going. It was a karaoke machine, yay! And the mouse may not have been a keen dancer, but you could bet he loved seeing karaoke. And so he passed the night away, singing joyfully as his dragon date did his thing. I'm in the corner watching you kiss her. Whoa. Because he's a mouse, so he squeaks. I'm living in the now the guy you're taking home. I'm just dancing on my own. The end. Whew. Okay. I have to say it's hard to do that without an audience. <laughs> so when I've been doing those performances recently where I improvise a story, I've done a very similar thing, but I've done it with a live audience. And uh, <laughs> with a live audience, you have the reactions, right? So it's quite difficult. Let me just, okay, there, is, there are still people here. That's good. <laughs> I was a bit worried, like, what if I finished the story and everyone was just gone, right? <laughs> that would be embarrassing. Okay, let me sit down again. Ah! Let me get my chair. Oh, let me put my dragons away. Oh, such a busy, busy place. Yes. I'm going to blow my nose privately. Okay, so thank you for helping me with that story. Oh, I'll move the microphone closer. Thank you for helping me with that story. Oh, suddenly I'm very quiet. I've got some lovely comments. Thank you for all the lovely comments. Jay says, I can't believe you actually created it live. Well, like I said, it's definitely easier <laughs> with a live audience, but like, I like the challenge. I like the challenge of improvising, you know? And if I can, why not? It's a, it's a new thing I'm trying. So actually soon I'm going to be doing um, acting classes. I'm starting acting classes on the 25th of April and I'm so excited. And I also maybe want to do improv, improvisation classes at some point, but we'll start with acting. So yeah, I'm really, I'm really just enjoying pushing myself creatively. I want to give myself creative challenges. And this was a perfect way of doing that. I'm just drinking water, Boris. It's nothing exciting, although it is in a pint glass. Um, so it's not beer. Beer does not look like this. It's just water. But I may have a cheeky gin and tonic after this stream. Okay, what time is it? Oh, damn, we've, or we've almost been going two hours. So I think maybe it's time to start wrapping up the stream. But... I want to ask, was there any language in that story? Were there any words that you didn't know? Anything you want to explain? Sorry, anything you want me to explain? What was your favorite part of the story? And um, yeah, ooh, it's late. It's like almost 8 p.m. I'm, 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 I'm good though. I'm good. I was a bit worried. I was like, am I going to have energy for the live stream? You know, because it, it does take a lot of energy, but I think I've really enjoyed it and I don't feel exhausted. I just feel like, ah, oh, like mellow, I feel relaxed. So thank you. It's been a pleasure. Okay. Um, 
any questions about the story and any questions in general, I suppose? I feel like maybe... Uh, I can't think of anything. I've kind of, I've kind of done everything I wanted to do for this stream, so good job everyone. We did well. I'm really happy we got that adorable picture. <laughs> Let me do one, wait, let me, let me, um, let me do one selfie, if I do, like, with my lights, yeah, this is fun. And then in this selfie, you can see me on the side, it's a very silly picture. Oh, this is the lovely thing is, um, having these lights set up. I look so good. <laughs> I should have these lights on all the time. Um, okay. David says I have a nice apartment. Thank you. It's big. It's got a lot of space, which is nice. Okay. I think it's time to start settling down. So again, thank you all so much for coming to the stream. Remember, you can get my books at easystoriesinenglish.com slash book. It's been an absolute pleasure. I, I'm i thinking of doing these streams maybe once a month. Um, it's annoying. I, 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 I was hoping we would get more viewers because in the past, the streams got a lot more people. But you know what? I think maybe I just need to do it for a while so that everyone knows it's like a thing again. And then... We can, you know, make it a fun thing. But all of you have made it a really lovely stream. So thank you so much. And I really appreciate all of your support and for listening to the podcast. Two a month. Boris says do two streams a month. I will do that if I have the time and the energy. But with the other performance stuff I'm doing, like I do a sauna storytelling event once a month. And then I do... This other storytelling open mic at a pub once a month and then I maybe so like I'm already doing various other stuff um, but I'll, I'll consider it to be honest I think I want to try I also I also want to try um, experimenting a bit more with the stream doing different things like maybe maybe we watch a video together and discuss the video maybe we play some games together um, I want to try different things with the stream. So yeah, so it's like, like a nice space to experiment as well. Boris also would like more non-fiction podcasts. Well, I do a conversation podcast now once per month. Um, so yes, also the new episode that's coming out on Tuesday. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll talk about that. So this coming Tuesday, there's a new episode of the podcast called A Crooked Old House. And I honestly think this is the best episode I've ever done. I've recorded it and I think I recorded such a great episode. I felt really happy with my performance. So definitely listen to the episode on Tuesday. And if you support e Easy Stories in English Premium, then you get versions of the episodes with no advertisements, ad-free, and I did a little post-mortem. I did a little episode where I talk all about the story that I wrote and my feelings about it and what it means, and that comes out on Tuesday as well. So if you want that, then go to um, easystoriesinenglish.com slash support. You can join for just, I think it's $4.99 a month. And then you get all of the episodes of the podcast without adverts. And there are some bonus episodes, such as the one on Tuesday. So, oh, I don't want to leave. It's so lovely talking to you all. But but I have to go. I have to go relax. Because otherwise, if I keep staying, I'll, just, I'll never go to bed. I'll, my brain will be like, Bleh! so yeah, <laughs> Ooh, excited. Okay, okay. Oh, let me just be a little gremlin. I'm a little gremlin. Voguing gremlin. Woo. Okay, I should really stop. <laughs> 
he says very much not stopping. Um, it's just really nice hanging out with you, honestly. It's it's a weird. I've missed this. I've missed this. So thank you all for giving me this. I really appreciate it. And yeah, um, oh, I'm really bad at ending the. <laughs> okay, I should leave because otherwise everyone will just get bored and leave. So, thank you all. Thank you all. Mwah, mwah. Kisses. Mwah. Um, have a glorious weekend. Have a wonderful, gorgeous, beautiful, darling, fun, cherished weekend. And I'll see you. Listen to the new episode on Tuesday, and I'll see you. Probably next month. We'll see. All right. Bye.